Musicians are protesting Spotify in light of recent controversy. And former Miss USA passes away. These stories and more, All Access starts right now. Good evening and welcome to this week's edition of HPU All Access. I'm Reese Allen. And I'm Anna Harris. We have lots of high point news coming your way, but first let's head over to Christy Rebar with the weather. Christy? Thanks Anna and Reese. I'm Christy Rebar and here's a look at our seven day forecast. Thursday is going to look like it's going to be 58 with a low of 47 and Friday and Saturday, Saturday are going to be our high forecast days of 64 and 66 with a low of 58 and 37. Sunday is looking like it's going to be 51 with a low of 29. Monday is going to be our coldest with a high of 39 and low of 30. Tuesday and Wednesday are going to be highs of 49 and 50 with lows of 29 and 35. That's all for All Access Weather. Back to you guys at the desk. Thank you, Christy. I am so glad that it's not going to be snowing this weekend. I don't know about you. I'm happy to see some warmer temperatures coming. Yeah, I mean, I know we've had like three snowstorms mm -hmm. in a row on weekends. I mean, right. it's kind of crazy what we've been having. So I'm I know. ready for it to calm down, get a little bit warmer. Yeah. I know we're just going to have that rain, but honestly, I'm ready for, you know, that rainy weekend in. Yes, for sure. Mm -hmm. Spotify is receiving backlash over providing a platform for content creators that spreads misinformation. The music streaming service is being specifically called out for Joe Rogan's podcast and his comments on the COVID-19 vaccine. This gained more attention when popular musicians Neil Young and Jody Mitchell requested their music to be taken off Spotify as a form of protest. Their actions put Spotify in a tough spot as, Rogan's, uh, as Rogan is the streaming service's most popular host. On Sunday, Rogan responded through a 10 minute Instagram video saying, quote, I'm just a person who sits down and talks to people and has conversations with them. Do I get things wrong? Absolutely, I get things wrong, but I try to correct them, end quote. Spotify will not be removing Ro Rogan's podcast, but will be able, will be labeling some podcasts with similar content as controversial. Miss USA and Charlotte lawyer Chesley Christ died Sunday in New York City at 30 years old. Chris died by suicide and was pronounced dead at her Manhattan apartment building at 7 a.m. Throughout her career, she held the title of Miss North Carolina USA in 2019, won multiple local pageants, ran a fashion blog, and was an avid contributor to nonprofits. In a statement from Chris' law firm, they called her a light that radiated every room. We send our condolences to all those affected by this tragedy. If you or anyone is in need of help, please contact the HVU Office of Counseling Services. Now let's head over to Campus Update reporter Christy Rebar to hear about the latest about what's going on on campus. Christy? Hello and welcome to All Access Campus Update. I'm Christy Rebar and here's a look at what we have going on at HPU this week. First, our main event is the Spring Family Weekend. HPU has a great lineup of events starting on Friday which shows in the Cult Planetarium from 1 to 4 and The Rain, a tribute to the Beatles concert in the Cubain Arena at 7.30. On Saturday, there will be the Genesis Gospel Choir concert at 1 in the Hayward Chapel, Family Bingo in the Slane Gym at 2.30 and at 7 p.m. Charcoal Pony Show in the Hayworth Fine Arts Center with a special a cappella concert featuring all your favorite HPU groups right after. Then to wrap the weekend up, there will be a special family weekend worship service in the Hayworth Chapel at 10 a.m. and lace up your skates for some ice skating at the rink going on from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Make sure to check out all the HPU family weekend website for more information and events going on around campus. Next, are you looking to shoot some spares in your spare time? HPU Cat is hosting a bowling venture trip on Saturday, February 12th. To sign up, go to HPU Connect or Campus Concierge. Cat also just re released this month's movie schedule, which is set to include Paul Blart Mall Cop, Crudes, A New Age, You At Us, Cruella, Judas and the Black Messiah, and Selma. Make sure to check the Cat Instagram or HPU Connect for all official days and times to catch a show. Also, do you have a great singing voice and want to make it big on campus? Here's your chance. HP is the voice is accepting auditions to be on this season of the show. To audition, record a one minute video of you singing your favorite song and then fill out the Google form in the at HPU Vision Instagram bio. Well, that's all for this week's campus update. Thanks for tuning in and back to you guys at the desk. 
Well, sounds like so much fun. Thanks for the update, Christy. Coming back from break, we'll hear um, one of we'll hear from one of HBU's newest student leaders and get the latest scoop in politics. All access will be right back. Stay with us. Welcome to Freddy's. What can we get started for you? I haven't had a carb in three weeks, and if I have one more sip of a kale smoothie, I need a Freddy's original double with cheese, fries, and a turtle sundae. Please. Coming right up. If you're gonna be bad, it better be good. Being bad never tasted this good. Bring it on. Freddy's, the experience that puts a smile on your face and the taste that brings you back. High Point University is focused on preparing students for the world as it is going to be. There's a growth mindset in our institutional DNA. So while our campus growth is impressive, the true relevance lies in how HPU creates an innovative learning environment that fosters the entrepreneurial spirit in the minds, in the hearts, and in the souls of our students. This is High Point University. Extraordinary. All access. Now let's hear from Student Spotlight host Lizbeth Ramirez. On today's Student Spotlight, we have MPHC President and Bonner Leader Layla Welch. Layla, how are you today? I'm wonderful, Lizbeth. How are you? I'm doing really good. It's great good. to have you as a Bonner Leader. I know what it's like. <laughs> I know you can get busy. So we're just going to jump right into it. So sure. you are the MPHC. PHC yes, president. That is correct. Um, what is that like at a primarily white college? Yeah. So NPHC stands for the National Panhellenic Council, and just to give background about it, it's the collection of historically African American fraternities and sororities on campus. So having the position of president overseeing that aspect of campus life, it's incredibly enriching for me because it allows for a consistent bridge between different underrepresented groups as well as the groups at large on High Point's campus, and it allows for a whole lot of interconnectivity that we get to serve and do things that are beyond the normal capacity of what people do at High Point. Of course, yes. that sounds so great. And of course, it's Black History Month. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, so what do you guys have planned? What events are you guys ready to see for this month and just upcoming for the rest of the year? Yeah, so the focus for NPHC this month and this semester really is intersectional community outreach. So a lot of the programming that you'll see MPHC do is going to be catered towards assisting those on High Point's campus and beyond and also working with other councils on campus. Um, and when you look at individual orgs amongst our council, their service projects and their events are going to be dedicated to really helping those in need at a local level um, in different ways and different aspects. Right. And speaking of local, so you do work in the community a lot. You're a Bonner leader. How has that experience been for you? You're a senior. Tell me about your capstone. Um, for those of you that don't know, so yes. Bonner leaders have a capstone that they do at the end of the four years. So tell me a little more about that. Oh, well, to answer the first half, it's a wonderful time being a Bonner. <laughs> Um, for four years, because the Bonner program is dedicated to consistent service and civic engagement, it's a super enriching thing that I'm able to be a part of. Um, at the site that I get to work at for two days out of the week, um, I'm able to do a food pantry volunteer service, I'm able to do service in community gardens, I'm able to help with domestic um, violence shelters, I'm able to do other things with other community partners in the area um, and really provide different access points of resource for those in the community. For myself as a senior, like you said, because of um, the status of seniors, our capstone project that we're working on is actually dedicated to food insecurity this year. Mm -hmm. um, food insecurity is a major issue within Guilford County, mm -hmm. but my project is actually looking at the ways food insecurity shows up in college students' lives versus those outside of the community's lives. Um, it's something that isn't often talked about, but it affects people in way more ways than what's realized. So my project has been dedicated for the past six months to learning how different college students on High Point's campus, as well as surrounding triad colleges, um, struggle with the issue, deal with the issue, and identify the issue to kind of help alleviate the pressures that people experience while they're still in undergrad. Of course, that's interesting because you wouldn't think um that on High Point's campus with so much food and so many different yeah. dining options that people would struggle with food insecurity. So oh, yeah, that's sure. really interesting. That's a really interesting capstone. Um, 
And so another question that I have for you is, so for Martin Luther King Day, yeah. Rafael Matos, yes. right? Um, yes. He is actually <laughs> Afro-Latino. Mm -hmm. He was on campus. Um, you brought him here. How was that experience? How was that program? Yeah, so the, the program that we did, um, he had a talk that he was able to facilitate called Building Bridges, How to Identify Bias in Your Community. And the, the purpose of the talk itself was to educate those that attended, whether virtually or in person, because we were able to do it hybridly. Um, those that attended were able to gather skills on how to identify their own biases towards themselves, towards others in their communities, and then how to rebuild and restructure the way that they see civil involvement and like social involvement, um, so that they're more conscious of the differences that we have between one another, but they're not blinded by those differences to the point of where they're unable to be in a community, where they're unable to serve together, where they're unable to have communications with one another, um, and just really breaking down how to tackle finding yourself in your own identity and also respecting other people's identities as well. Um, and it was wonderful. He is actually my uh, fraternity brother per our constitutions. Um, so that was a beautiful thing to have in terms of an NPHC connection right, right away. Right. Um, and he enjoyed the speaking and, and engaging with students as well. So all around, it was a wonderful thing. Layla, you are yes. so involved. Congratulations, <laughs> you're gonna be graduating soon. Um, yes. You are such a big part of High Point's campus. Mm -hmm. um, would do you have anything that you would like for HPU to know or just anybody to know about Bonner Leaders yeah. or what you do in your service, just anything? Yeah, well, the, the walk away, because my entire career at High Point has been dedicated to service, whether it's from my organization, Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated, serving as the MPAC president, or even just being a Bonner Leader, and as well as doing a bunch of other things. But the heart of what I've loved about being here is the ability to impact on so many levels with so many people who are like-minded. And that's something that when I leave, I'm hoping that energy of being able to be involved for the sake of serving is going to be the best thing to take away. Wow, thank you so much, Layla, yes. for being here. It was a pleasure. Yes. <laughs> and thank back you. to you, Anna and Reese. Thanks, Lizbeth. Now we're joined at the desk by political correspondent Will O'Brien. Will? Thanks, Reese. President Biden's immigration policies are once again being sharply criticized by Republicans as secretly but knowingly breaking the law after new videos were leaked within the past week that showed planes full of illegal aliens landing in Westchester County, New York in the middle of the night and then being resettled all throughout the New York tri-state area at American expense. The situation down at the southern border is now the worst it's been in decades, where there have now been over two million known illegal border crossings since Biden took office. For some perspective, that's more than the entire population of Houston, Texas, America's fourth largest city. ICE and CBP are furious with the Biden administration and the rest of the federal government by saying that they simply do not have the resources they need to handle the number of people coming in and the amount of drugs being smuggled across. Some border agents didn't even bother to show up when DHS Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas recently paid a visit to the border. So, a uh, highly controversial issue, as you were mentioning, so I'll spare you both the partisanship of it. But what are your overall reactions to the situation? I mean, for me, one of the things that stood out to me was that it's the entire population of Houston, Texas. Right. The, the, the amount of people yep. that are coming in, which is insane. It's crazy. And I would hope that they would get it figured out sometime soon. Right. I mean, I, I'm not sure what the answer is, but I yeah. definitely know there's some miscommunication, some problems happening. Yeah, it's, it's so striking because he's in the mid to low 20s on approval. Biden is, it's mm -hmm. really, it's arguably his worst issue. And right. he promised to be a unifier, but I think what could unify the country a little bit more is be like, okay, we gotta fix this. But right. he doesn't do that. So I know. It's, cra it's back, very baffling. <laughs> All right. America's crime crisis is also spiraling out of control with over 15 US cities setting new all-time homicide records in 2021. Some of the cities that were hardest hit include, among others, Chicago, New York, Philadelphia, Austin, San Francisco, and LA. Republicans are blaming anti-police rhetoric and misguided democratic policies as the main causes behind the crime spikes. But a bipartisan turning point does appear to be on the horizon after the tragic murders of Texas Deputy Charles Galloway in Houston, along with NYPD officers Jason Rivera and Wilbert Mora. So I was reading the NYPD officer story last week. I was shocked mm -hmm. at the crowd that came out in, on, in right. St. Patrick's I Cathedral. I saw the same thing. I, could, I couldn't believe it. So I was like, I got to write a story on this. So I know. It was you, literally completely yeah. flooded with right. all the hats. And it was insane. Yeah, I watched his widow speech. 22-year-old kid, really. Mm -hmm. It was really sad. So is this a turning point? I would say it is. I mean, it's a turning point in the sense of, like, you saw how many people, how many cops came out right. in support in that if this crime crisis really is so far out of control, I think that this is, could be a huge like wake up, I guess wake up call and probably not a very good circumstance, yeah. but 
in the end it might be well and i think it. it's also striking it wasn't just cops and police officers right. it was mm -hmm. also a lot of just bystanders and people within the community who yeah. just wanted to come out and show their support just because it is yeah. just i mean it's sad exactly story. hopefully mm -hmm. if there's any issue that can unite voters of both parties hopefully it's this mm -hmm. yes so. i completely agree Thank you for being with us, Will. You so bet. coming back from the break, sports reporter Brooke Ruppin will talk about what's going on in the world of HVU Athletics. And we'll tell you just the place to donate and give back this winter season. Welcome to Freddy's. How are you guys doing? Meetings. Lunch meetings all week. All salads. Bean salads. Quinoa salads. Heirloom salads. Frise salads. Sometimes a guy needs a Freddy's original double, Chicago dog, and a turtle Sunday. Make that two, please. Three. Absolutely. If it's gonna be bad, it better be good. Being bad never tasted this good. Freddy's, the experience that puts a smile on your face and the taste that brings you back. Musco Lighting, we make it happen. Welcome back to All Access. Our sports reporter, Brooke Ruffin, has the latest on sports, so tell us what's happening, Brooke. Thank you and good evening. I'm Brooke Ruffin with your All Access Sports Update. Today is National Girls and Women in Sports Day, a day we acknowledge the achievements of female athletes and recognize women's contributions to sports and High Point Athletics is giving special meaning to this day. Our athletes took time to have fun and express their individuality in a photo shoot that uncovers the true beauty of each person beyond the field, course, court, and track. Check it out on High Point Panther Instagram. This past weekend, we had some amazing accomplishments by HP Women's Basketball and some great record-breaking finishes by our track and field athletes on the road in South Carolina. First up on the court, the Panthers traveled to Clinton this past Saturday to pick up a 57-47 victory over Presbyterian. Panthers Kaylee Shire and Nakia Terrell helped secure victory with 11 points apiece. Claire Wyatt and Jaden Wrightsell gave the Panthers a comfortable lead with a 5-0 run from Wyatt in the third quarter and furthered it by 10 with two free throws by Wrightsell. Jensen Edwards assisted the Panther victory with eight rebounds and four assists. Tonight, they traveled the road to take on North Carolina A&T in Greensboro for the first time since 2004. Men's basketball fought hard, but ultimately posted a 72-77 loss to Campbell this past Saturday. Zach Austin scored a career high of 21 points, and Alex Holt scored 18. Panthers became more efficient in the second half, shooting 53% from the field. Now excitement is building as the Panthers host Gardner-Webb in the Cobain Arena tonight. From the crower to the track, the Panthers broke records and had top finishes at the South Carolina Invitational in Columbia this past weekend. Cindy Horn posted a mark that placed her fifth in the nation in pole vault as she moves closer to the national championships in March. Alicia Donson finished second in the triple jump to set a school record, and Niall Facey finished the 60 and 200 meter dash with top 10 finishes. On the men's side, Darren Dudley had two top 10 finishes and was a top 10 collegiate finisher in the 60 meter dash, while Chris Van Nykerk finished first in the shot put. Next, the Panthers traveled to Winston-Salem this weekend for the Campbell City Invite. The Groundhog may have said six more weeks of winter, but spring is closer than we think, as HBU men's lacrosse takes on University of Maryland this Saturday in Maryland. That's all for your All Access Sports Update. I'm Brooke Ruffin. Back to you, Anna and Reese. Real estate firm hosts a bedding and blanket drive for the homeless. Real estate agent Tammy Watson and her team at Caldwell Banker Advantage braved the cold temperatures on Saturday while Winston-Salem residents dropped off their extra blankets and sheets. Their charity, Tammy's Hands Up, already held a toy drive at Christmas time and have diaper and pet food drives scheduled for later this year. All of the bedding and blankets was given to local homeless shelters. 
An eight-year-old from Idaho wrote a Christmas adventure book that has now over a year-long wait list. Dylan Helbig is a second grader who wrote and illustrated his own children's book. While at the library with his grandmother, he snuck this book onto the display in the children's section. After the book was placed, it started to be checked out and has remained off the shelf with people waiting to read it. And that does it for our broadcast this evening. Thank you for watching us. Join us same time, same place next week. For HP All Access, I'm Reese Allen. And I'm Anna Harris. Have a great week, High Point.